Good morning everyone and welcome back to a professional match of StarCraft 2. Today it's time for a Protoss versus Terran where we find ourselves on the map Blackburn. Spawning here in the bottom left hand corner and playing with the red Protoss probes from Denmark, we have Max Pax. His opponent in the bottom right playing with the blue SCVs from Germany, we're looking at Hero Marine's main command center. Alrighty, so good old Max Pax going up against Hero Marine. Not gonna lie man, I'm quickly turning into a bit of a Max Pax fanboy. When Max Pax first came up a couple of years ago, he was cheesing quite a lot. But these days, I mean, especially on a map like Blackburn, you can't really cheese your opponent very effectively. I mean, there's a little ramp right here, going down from the natural towards the low ground. There's not really that big of like a ledge over here to blink up in either. You could definitely go for some Void Ray shenanigans if you really wanted to, or maybe transition towards Tempest. But I'm pretty sure Max Pax is going to be forced to play a macro game here, also because he's going up against Hero Marine. And Hero Marine, of course, in general, a very solid, straightforward macro Terran player. He doesn't really die to stupid stuff, one of the highest ranked Terran players in the world. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if Max Pax is going to play a straightforward macro game. And it seems to me that over the last year or so, that's really what he's been working on. So, as of me making this video on Aligulek, he recently managed to overtake Neep as far as the Protoss rankings go. Which is quite impressive, because Neep, of course, has been an absolute powerhouse over in North America for a very long time. Now, obviously, the big difference between Max Pax and Neep is that Neep has won like a dozen tournaments, and Max Pax is still a relative newcomer to the scene. But there's no denying that Max is getting very good very, very quickly. As we make this video, he's considered to be the 7th highest ranked non-Korean player in the world on Aligelec. 2nd highest ranked non-Korean Protoss just behind Showtime. So hey, for what it's worth, Max Pax looking pretty good. We'll find out though, how well he's gonna do right here against Mr. Hero Marine. Now, I'm excited to watch Max Pax play, but I'm actually also excited to, uh, to hear what you think of this particular video as far as the video quality goes. So, if you watched yesterday's video that I posted to the YouTube channel, you may be aware of the fact that I have got a new computer. This is, as a matter of fact, the very first cast that I'm doing on the new machine. And rather than like creating like a mirror of my old system, I decided to go for a complete fresh installation of both Windows, as well as all of my software, my recordings. Um, everything is basically set up from scratch once again. And I'm assuming if you hear this, right, if it eventually makes it to the YouTube channel, um, I guess I set everything up correctly and I, I you know I hope everything will be running well uh, but if you're watching on one of the higher quality settings right here on YouTube please let me know down below in the comment section of the video what it looks like it should look quite a bit better actually than it, what it used to look like um, before I got the system because I mean the graphic settings are gonna be quite a bit better although I didn't necessarily buy this computer just with Starcraft 2 in mind because I mean <laughs> this game is pretty old anyways double Reaper right now follow up after the very first Marine this is going to be a little bit of a micro battle, okay? Right now, the, uh, yep, the Reapers will be spotted. Stalker's going to have to try and micro backwards. There's an Adept as well, I believe. Yep, coming on the back of this. Marine is running dangerously low. Stalker, though, also in very low hit points. Those Reapers do heal up pretty quickly outside of combat. Shade has been activated right now by that Adept, so it's going to be able to chase two units down. At the same time, the Stalker's taking a lot of damage, but also that will be cleaned up. And Max Pax grabs himself a couple of unit kills right from the get-go. In general, it seems much more important for the Protoss player to keep those units alive than it is for the Terran. Because these Protoss units are real expensive and... I mean, the Reapers are nice to keep around, but... Considering this little setup right here behind the main base, I don't think he would really scout too much. Although, I'm pretty sure Hero Marine would like to know about the fact that there's already a Dark Shrine coming up. Prism is being Chrono Boosted right now too here by the Protoss player. It's gonna go up to what seems to be three gateways, so this is that variant where... You basically get your uh, your three Dark Templar out ridiculously quickly. This is probably the fastest DTs you can actually get out. I think they hit in like half a minute or so. From now, the question is, is Hero Marine going to be ready for it, right? So, if you're going up against a weaker Terran player, they'll probably be late with their um, Engineering Bay and therefore their Missile Turret, which gives them detection, or they will not save up energy. Hero Marine, though, already at 70 energy right now on that first Command Center. I'm pretty sure he's gonna be fine, assuming he does not drop a mule. Now, he actually got st uh, he actually has two scans available at this point. So, I'm, I'm not sure if he saw anything. Now, he didn't really see much. But it shouldn't really matter all too much. Anyways, one Dark Templar is gonna make its way on over towards the natural expansion, and the other two invisible men are going straight into the main. The ninjas have arrived. 
Scans are available. Missile turret starts up. One DT gets picked off. Second DT in the Netro expansion. It's gonna start working on some of those workers. But missile turret finishes up over here as well. Yeah, and all things considered, that was a very clean defense. Now, Big Gape over here has been pumping out a ton of Marines very quickly. Stimpak is finishing up. Combat Shield is already done. He doesn't have any Medivex with his army, obviously, because his starport is very late. But he could definitely go for a bit of a push if he wanted to. Then again, there's obviously also a little ramp over here, so it's going to be quite hard to actually, you know, march up that ramp. Especially with battery overcharge. Although, I've got a feeling... Okay, well, this third command center... Or sorry, the third nexus gets spotted right away. Uh, pretty sure, yeah, he can definitely make a, an attack for the third base, right? And try and force that one to go down. The Dark Templar, though, have morphed into Archons instead. So the Invisible Men are now glowy boys. <laughs> They're gonna be able to start harassing here. We'll spot at this point as well. There's a triple barracks opener right here from the Terran player. He also notices the lack of army here, I'm sure. So that third Nexus is never gonna happen, right? I mean, there's like nothing available here. Even a natural expansion could be in a little bit of trouble, though. Max can obviously always recall this. He's just trying to deal some damage here. Yeah, he does decide to recall. Makes a lot of sense. Scan right there for the Terran player. Confirms exactly what's waiting for him in the natural expansion. And it turns out it's really not that much. Still gonna try and poke down the ramp here. But I think you need to be extremely careful. Yeah, force wheels are gonna be nice. But that Nexus is never gonna live. Does cancel it right there at the last possible second. Alright. So. Oh, oh, hello. Okay, that was sloppy. Not sure exactly what happened there. Almost loses the prism as well. One Archon going down for no apparent reason at all. Just a little bit of a misery, I suppose. Can't really afford making those mistakes, though, at this level. Anyways, Hero Marine doesn't really have much longevity in this army at this point, though. Because without Medivex, like, every single time you stim, those units will just lose a certain amount of their hit points, right? And it's very, very dangerous to stick them in the battle for too long without Medivex and without healing. Third command center comes up right now. Third Nexus once again gets planted down as well. Protoss has already made the transition right now towards the robotics facility, of course, but also the Robo Bay. So he's going to be able to go for uh, the ranged upgrade right here on these Colossi. Two Marines apparently run on over here. Got themselves a couple of worker kills as well, but nothing all too crazy. How many workers so far in total? Eh. Not the best situation here for Max Specs, but it's looking pretty nice, of course, for Hero Marine. Who decides to add on... Barracks number 4 and 5 at this point in the game as well. He already has the plus 1 infantry weapons. Plus 1 infantry armor is coming up right now too. Wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see a second NG Bay here in a little bit. And obviously that armory as well. Although he could just stick on single upgrades as well, just fine. Alright, so he's going to start a little bit of drop harass. So it's kind of cool actually. So in general right now with Protoss, it seems that we have Protoss players that are very focused on those... Gateway heavy armies, right? Where you go for the Zealots and the Stalkers primarily, and you really try and harass your opponent for a very long time. A very Zergy way of playing Protoss in a way, right? But on the flip side, you also do have Protoss players like, for example, Max Packs in this game, that are focusing a lot more on those heavy hitters, right? So he's got a couple of Archons. Well, he has one Archon right now, I guess, but he had the Dark Templar. He's got a few Colossi. In general, he's not going to have that many units available. And this is relatively vulnerable to that drop harass, because you cannot really commit this army in multiple places at once very easily at all. Usually triple Colossus is common, sometimes we see four of them coming out as well. Either way, he did already finish up chart, Blink is coming up right at this point in the game as well. Man, when you go for that triple barracks opener, Terran has so many units. <laughs> Such a big army already. I feel like Terran has had a ton of units the entire time. Interestingly enough, these couple of Zealots are doing more work than the uh, Dark Templar ever did, although, yep, Prism is not gonna be able to lift that tail. Or lift to tell that tail, rather. A little bit of harassment right here over at the front as well, but only a handful of workers end up going down. As expected, to be honest, right? Hero Marine, he doesn't really take a whole lot of damage. Now, this is the scary moment. So, the Zealots just got sent out on a trip towards the other side of the map. However, Terran, at this point, is also moving across. Look at this Protoss army. It's kind of small. It's not really that big at all. Disruptor is going to be coming up as well. Ooh, he's actually setting himself up for a massive drop at the same time. Ooh, the Zealots are running into the natural expansion. They already kill a siege tank, it looks like. 
How exactly are you going to commit your units, though? Okay, that's definitely not enough Stalkers right now to get rid of those Marines and Marauders. Colossi come in from the natural expansion as well, but the Vikings are positioned properly. One of the Colossi ends up going down. At the same time, though, six SCVs have already been killed. The reinforcing Terra units eventually will clean all of this up. Here, Marine once again picked up and went down towards the low ground. The longer that this goes, though, the longer that this takes the better that this becomes right here for max specs to defend. Although, I feel like at this point, I mean, it's 106 army supply versus 60-something. This should be very playable right now for Hero Marine, right? Once again, we have a big commitment. Siege tanks right there cannot quite hit those Colossi. Uh, there's Disruptors over there, too. Good Force Fields once again. Very calm and collected. Shadow Stride ability does get the Knight. Disruptor also with a Purification Nova right there over at the third base. And it looks to me like max specs is holding on. Well, we had like a 40 supply advantage just like a minute ago or so for Hero Marine. Right now, that supply advantage has been evened up for the most part. A new Dark Shrine will actually be produced. Okay, Maxwell's like, you know what? I love those glow- uh, I love those, uh, what did I call them? Invisible men. Yeah, I- I, <laughs> I love those guys. Another Colossus ends up going down, though. Is there enough right now for the Protoss player for Denmark to actually break through this? Purification Novas, connect with the Siege Tanks. They'll be picked off. Still, though, Liberator up in the air. Okay, gets a couple of kills. Vikings right here desperately trying to work on that final Colossus as well. That one has been responsible for a ton of kills. This one Disruptor also picked up 11 of those kills in total, and so did his brother. <sighs> All right. That's always such a dangerous moment, though. It also, it always seems crazy to me that Protoss players, whenever they see the Terran army moving out, they have, like, six units at home, five of them being Zealots. Then they send all of the Zealots to the other side of the map, and they just cross their fingers and hope that they won't die. It turns out if you micro really well, uh, you can stay alive for a very long time using your, you know, your shield batteries and clever positioning of structures and just wait for warp ins and reinforcements to arrive. You can stay alive for a long time, but it always seems like such a dangerous moment. Okay, Zealots on the other side of the map once again got cleaned up. Marines and Marauders over here still being a nuisance, although those Metavex are without energy right now. Can he get out with the Metavex? Stalkers want to blink forward, I can tell you that much. Okay, one of the Metavex goes down. Other one will stay alive, mostly because of this uh, Sim City right here from Max. Alright, so a nice back and forth, right? I feel like a year ago, Hero Marine would have absolutely smashed Max Pex. Like, uh, no disrespect at all, but Hero Marine has always been really good. Right now, actually, he's looking better than pretty much ever. Um, but, um, yeah, there's no denying that Mexpex has been making some very impressive improvements over the last 365 days or so. It's cool, man. I don't really remember having any pro gamers from Denmark. Although, I might be mistaken. Maybe once upon a time, one of the old school names or something was. Or maybe I'm forgetting someone entirely. But I'm pretty sure there's not really that many players at this level, at the very least, from Denmark. At least the only one that comes to mind at this point is Max Pack, so... There's gonna be like five Danish viewers that watch this video, and they're probably really excited about it. There's probably about 20,000 German viewers, because I have tons of people from Germany actually watching the content. <laughs> that are probably also really excited to see Germany doing really well. Obviously, there's Lambo, there's Showtime, there's Hero Marine, right, from Germany. And uh, they're all at the top of the game, pretty much. All play uh, one of the three races each, right? So one Terran, one Protoss, one Zerg. It's a, it's a good time to be a, uh, a German StarCraft 2 fan, I feel like. You have multiple players to cheer for, and uh, yeah, it's cool. Anyways, once again, Shadow Strike will be, will be researched, and I believe that this time around it will finish up as well. It's kind of funny, though, because this could actually kind of work backwards here for Hero Marine. He killed the Dark Shrine. He knows that they shouldn't be appearing again. And most of the time when the Dark Shrine gets made like that, you don't actually go for new Dark Templar. They're already moving across the map, though. Medivac drop once again, heading towards the main base. No units waiting there this time around, although, well, there's a few Stalkers. I don't mean to, like, be rude to you guys, but you're just gonna have a pretty hard time, although I guess with the battery overcharge right here, they buy quite a lot of time. At the same time, the rest of the Terran army is moving forward. Couple of Disruptors available. Is he gonna be able to target fire them down in time? Is he? Nope, he won't. That was, once again, a ton of units going down. At the same time, I think the DTs over at the third base of the Terran player are getting some work done as well. Ten SCVs have already gone down. Metavex inside of the main base are cleared out for the most part. Reinforcing Dark Templar are available. Dark Templars, in a way, I mean, they're kind of like Zealots that have more damage per second, right? If you don't have detection available. Scans are being used all over the screen as well, but there's also a bunch of siege tanks here in the back. That being said, like four or so Immortals were produced during all of this. 
and they absolutely shred those siege tanks to pieces. <sighs> Once again, that was supposed to be a game-winning move right there by Hero Marine. Didn't happen. Hero Marine has been playing a very aggressive game so far, and Maxpex has been holding on uh, by the skin of his teeth. Well, this is nice. Yeah, this little medevac drop over here is actually getting quite a bit of work done. Gold base will be denied for a little while. Oh my god. <laughs> there they are. The ninjas. Always looking badass. They're just waiting for this Terran army to move out again. Does Hero Marine see the little glow? The little shimmer right there. Yeah, it's very difficult to spot. Since these players play so fast, they don't really look at one screen for a very long time, right? So... Air Marine probably wasn't staring at that meta effect right there when it was returning in this direction. Uh, looks like the natural expansion has been lifted up and is now moving on over towards the fourth base location. This is effectively three base command center all in, right? It, it, yeah, it kind of feels that way anyway. These Dark Templar could definitely move on over towards that newly acquired mineral line. That being said, once again, big medevac drop right now going towards the main base. Dark Templar over here warped in as well. And you know what? When you keep warping in... Okay, here's the purification over from the recall. Actually, will be picked off. When you keep... When you keep scanning, right, and you only have three CCs, at some point you'll run out of energy. There is detection at home over here, but obviously that blink is really nice to get out of trouble. Hero Marine still 40 supply up, though. Protoss is growing when it comes to that heavy hitter count, right? I don't really know what we should call these guys, but... The big boys are still, uh... Alive and kicking. Like, the problem is, if at Staren here, you run out of scans for about half a second, and these units are inside of your mineral line, they will kill everything. Like, you blink twice and the entire mineral line is gone. The DPS is absurdly high. Oh my god. Even with detection, right? Okay. You could just blink on top of the detection too, but... That's a one-way trip, I'm afraid, because scans obviously will follow this up. Second missile turret also being built, and even a third one. <laughs> Hero Marine has had enough. Looks like the DTs over here clean things up as well. Okay, how many DTs have we seen so far? There's nine available at this point in the game, and nine have gone down as well. Normally when we see a Dark Shrine opener, we see like, you know, three or four early on. And then maybe later on into the game, if there's a good moment that presents itself. But it looks like Maxpex is using the Dark Templar here as like a core Protoss unit, which I personally really like. You can definitely also set up surrounds on the siege tanks, right? Oh my god, we're at 14 tanks. If you blink with the Dark Templar on top of these tanks, they will kill them very quickly. The bio army is actually in front, and I think that's exactly what Maxpex is going for. The Dark Templar blink on top of it. When does he realize? He didn't realize until like half the siege tanks were gone. That indeed, all of the Dark Templar returned back home, and Maxpex takes a decisive victory in that battle. The Invisible Men strike again. That unintentionally rhymed. Only two of them ended up going down there. My god, we went from uh, 14 siege tanks to 5 really quickly. <laughs> That's actually so sick. Now, I know Terran players say you can't afford it, but like, a raven, please. One raven, please. Ravens are so good, man. Can we just make one raven? They're mobile detection. I feel like you have to against this kind of army. I mean, you don't have to have to, but... Seems cheaper than scanning a gajillion times and crossing your fingers hoping you spot the Dark Templar every single time. Purification Nova's rolling down the ramp. Siege tanks being softened up. Still, though, this is a scary Terran army. Marine Marauder, Medivac, Siege Tank, Viking. And once again, is he gonna go for a drop? <laughs> I believe so. Gotta be careful though, man. When the Protoss army is on the prowl like this, and you have like 30 supply on the other side of the map, it can be very dangerous. Maxpex right now heading on over towards the top left and corner as well. Natural and main base are completely mined out at this point, other than some leftover resources. He really does need a new base. Maxpex has been behind in the supply count the entire game long, it feels like. Eventually, though, when he maxes out, his army is gonna pack a punch, right? It's gonna be quite powerful. So, it's still only 1-1 upgrades, by the way, here for the Terran player. 
Protoss also doesn't really have that many upgrades, which means that these like big bio armies are not as powerful as they normally would be at this stage in the game. And I guess, you know, at the same time, this, uh, this Protoss army, I mean, obviously it does benefit from upgrades as well, but the Colossi and whatnot are real powerful. Here come the invisible men again, look at them. It's crazy, dude. The Dark Templar squad has been uh, has been roaming the map. I mean, here's the thing. You can give these disruptors, you can give... Well, actually, you can't give the disruptors attack upgrades. But you can give, like, the Dark Templar attack upgrades, and then they will still one-shot practically everything, right? <laughs> Whereas, like, every single time one of those Marines fires, they should get additional damage done. Look at this! <laughs> oh, my God! You can't even blink twice. You just blink once. And so do the Dark Templar, and everything disappears. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is that this Terran bio army benefits from those upgrades so much more than uh, the Protoss units do in this particular circumstance, right? <sighs> Alright. Plus three is coming up here regardless. Plus two finally starts up here as well for Big Gape. We're getting to the state in the game though where Max Pax is maxed out. And while he's been behind in supply for a very long time, He's going to be able to reach critical mass here very shortly. I actually really like that he still just has Dark Templar's core army units. He's got as many Dark Templar as basically Zealots and Stalkers here. The fact that he actually made a second Dark Shrine for this is also pretty cool. Because it really shows that... Where are we going? Are we going around the back? Is that the plan? Gotta wait for that cooldown for such a long time though. Alright. But yeah, it really shows that he feels he feels like these units are a core part of the a core part of the, the strategy. So you can go into the main base this way. This is a very long trip. Now he has to wait for cooldown again. <laughs> so the cooldown you can kind of see it over here. It's not super long, but still like a good 10 seconds or so. Jared Army once again. Boss strength to fight this. Dark Templar are gonna be able to blink up into the main base. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a long time. This is where the production is at, though. Ghosts are being produced right now as well for Hero Marine, which are really expensive for him. Is he gonna just go after the structures? Oh my god, he will. So now with the Terran army, all the way over at the third and fourth base. It's gonna take forever for those units to actually get in here. And right now, that opens up the opportunity for the rest of the Protoss army to engage. Bro, I love the way Max Pex is playing this. It's so cool. A legit, straight-up macro game right here by the Danish player. And it just simply seemed slightly better in this particular game than Hero Marine. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, let me know down below. And also, please let me know down below in the comment section what the quality of this video looks like. Does it look good? Does it look bad? Uh, I hope it looks good. Anyways, for now, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.